check it out. I got these vinyl stickers now and these buttons and some t-shirts and stuff. So things are starting to roll in. Uh, I've got an email. Talk to me about this if you really need this stuff. Anyway, my friend Melly, who lives out here where I live, uh, is moving to Oklahoma. And one of the things I got to get done before um, she leaves is this Oklahoma license plate guitar here. And I'm in the middle of it. Um, I'm about ready um, to take uh, the clamps off. Notice that these clamps I used, you know, I, I went right straight to the fingerboard, but uh, they have rubber on them, so it didn't mar anything. You always want to remember that I'm going to put, um, yeah, I can run a clamp and talk at the same time. You want to remember that I'm going to put matchbooks over the top of this and one of the questions I frequently get about the use of matchbooks is how do people know where they're at in terms of fretting if this is covered with matchbooks well I guess they can learn the matchbook that's going to be there I've got uh, the decals ready to throw on here some of these are pretty interesting you're going to see this one and a couple of things that were special this person they actually collected these matchbooks themselves but they're going to go all the way down here so my fret markers are actually going to have to be right along the side here now you notice that this fingerboard is fairly narrow um, and so when it comes to different solutions for using fret markers you, you got to kind of figure out um, how how big they are uh, their diameter and how they'll work here without getting too close to the top of the fingerboard the worst thing you can do is drill in here and then chip this out or something like that so where i'm at on this guitar right now well let's run through what i've done so far and kind of do a review on the basics of building one of these things now you remember my uh, scarf joint jig i've already cut a headstock out and then i just clip in a long piece of neck board and we'll just fire this. Isn't that simple? You know, once that's cut, uh, again, you've seen this before, uh, these match up. I glue this in place. Um, I use, remember the doweling that I use? I put dowels right here. They get hid underneath the fingerboard um, before I glue this on. Of course, I draw everything out uh, and then take it to the scroll saw. Once that's done, then I glue everything together and end up with this. You've seen this all before. Now, before I put the fingerboard on, let me get some of the stuff out of the way here. Before I go on the fingerboard, I need to go to the router and, and figure out where everything is going to fit together. In this case, I've got a two-piece uh, kit here that is going to drop down here. So this will drop down like so, down into there. So I need to route that down. And then this piece goes over the top that accepts the license plate. That drops down in there, and you guys remember that I take these apart and use a, a pretty big bridge that's going to go on a license plate here, and my pickup will sit right here. But in order for all this to work and for it to be at the right height, I've got to route this down. So it's a lot easier, believe me, on the router that you do the routing for all that stuff without the fingerboard, because if you're doing it with the fingerboard on it adds this much here that's not here so you're always trying to balance it and rock it back and forth so we're at a point right now where I'm happy with the way everything is and I've glued my fingerboard on overnight and let it dry up but you see there's parts sticking out on the side of it here this knot is not permanently attached that's just there to make sure everything was lined up again remember the episode on scale and intonation where we took a yardstick and figured out where everything is going to be and line up so we don't have any mistakes. Anyway, I am going to go sand this down, get this right, 
because it's time to put frat markers here and I want to do that before I do anything. There's a reason why and it has to do with measuring. All right, we're back at the bench with this thing. It come out nice and smooth, um, both sides. And of course, uh, this is going to be a right hand guitar, so our work is going to be up here. Oh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this while we're here. Um, you'll notice I don't really round off my my necks all the way over and do a round over. Instead, I kind of keep them square. There's a couple reasons for that. If you're working a slide, they always tell you keep your back, your fingers underneath sliding up straight up and down. Uh, that helps you with that. Um, and it kind of looks a little bit more rustic, but I can take a sure form or a light plane or something and go along and get this rounded off like so. I've got some more work to do here. I just don't want anybody um, hanging up their hand um, and do both sides like that. And there's more work to do here. Um, hey, check this out. I had MGB, uh, Michael, another shout out to you. They're countless nowadays. But what I'm going to do is the theme on this is Oklahoma. So I'm going to take Oklahoma roadmap and lay it up on the headstock. And then I'm going to put one of these Route 66 signs up here. I've got everything centered up. To be able to do that that'll be pretty cool but back to back to putting the fret markers in and doing that before i fret this thing you always want to make sure that you mark off um, this is not the first fret this is one two three so our fret marker will be there three four five i'll have one here six seven i'll have one here and then i'm going to jump down to 12. i don't usually mark off nine this is a flexible plastic I'm not even sure what it's made out of. It's certainly not metal. It's plastic of some type or another. But these are flexible. And they take, uh, you just take a small drill bit and you uh, drill the hole, push it down, cut it with a flush cut saw, and then you just sand it. And the next thing you know, it's perfect. It's got good contrast. All right, once they're cut off, I can take a fine piece of sandpaper and just run down my fingerboard like this. Once everything gets cleaned up, they stick out real nice. It's pretty simple. Now I can get on uh, putting my matchbooks on here and fretting things and getting closer to being done. All right, I put the fret markers in at the third, fifth, seventh, and twelfth fret. Um, we're going to work a buffalo head nickel into here somewhere um, from a year of the depression, so uh, that'll go along with our Oklahoma theme. And um, so with the fret markers done, and this all sanded looking good. I've got a little tad bit of work to do on this here to smooth this out. But now I'm going to fret this. And we'll get that done before I uh, put the matchbooks on. And of course this really cool 66 symbol. There's going to be a section of a road map of Oklahoma on here. And then we'll put our tuners right about here. And this will sit right above there. So... Before I, I'm going to take some really fine sandpaper and just run it up and down the edge there a little bit and round that off like so. And then I've got a really, really good set of fretting pliers. And so I'm going to use medium high nickel a silver fret wire. And I'm going to make sure that I'm fretting, that my fret board is... Um, supported i'm going to be driving right over the top of this i'm not going to be using any glue or anything i want to make sure that there's nothing weird at the end sticking out here so i'm going to clip that back just a little bit and then i'm just going to line that up on the line like this 
right at the edge. I'm going to tap this once and then just tap it several times. These are really nice. I can go right up to the edge like so. See that they get right up to the edge. There's not a lot of waste and there's not a lot of effort. Now I'm going to look at it make sure that nothing is sticking up too much. I'm just going to give it a couple good taps. If you see something sticking up there, bad deal. It's going to result in a lot of filing later. But the main thing to do here is to get this supported, this area supported, and to cut close. All right, we're marching right down the fretboard. Last fret. Listen to Tim Lohman back there on one of my coffee cans. There we go. Got to bevel them edges out a little bit. Make sure this is nice and have another look. All right, we took it down to the belt sander and it's looking pretty good. It's a little bit rough right there. Um, not so much there, but you notice I've got these square pegs. Yeah, they do go into a round hole. I've got one there and one over here. So I can just take a heavy file, turn this up like this and hold it between those and just run it down and knock out those final high points. Or you can get the big file across all the frets, the smoother they're going to be on yourself. There we go. We get that nice little bevel right there. So when people are running their hands up and down, I can still feel a little bit right there. And then at the end, I'm going to take this frat file and go to each one and just basically count the strokes I can get right there and right there and knock those down like that okay you can see the frat marker that we just did there I've put the frets on since you saw me last and now I've got this set of matchbooks that was given to me by the person that this guitar is going to so now I put these matchbooks on here remember they aren't the original matchbooks they've been digitally scanned and put on a decal transfer paper which is involves um, uh, spraying them with clear and doing things like that and that's in my graphics episode which I will give you a link to right about there right about now anyway this is pretty simple you just take the matchbook you put it the way you want um, sometimes matchbooks are because when you open them up the writing is one way or the other I like to keep them the way they are I would just simply uh, set this one up here. Let me get one that can possibly see a little bit better. Um, this one right here, for example, I want it to face this way up and down the neck. So I would simply place it on here, turn it over, and you can see I just slip it off to one side a little bit there, and I put a mark right there where the fret is. Do you see that? And then I slid this one back over here. It's still lined up on the top and made another mark there. And I'll just take a straight edge, connect those two dots and cut it, flip it over, take it off the transfer paper and put it there. And then once that line is cut, of course, the next one, you just go down and march all the way down the neck like that with all the matchbooks. Okay, real quick here, I'll show you one. I've got a little container of Mod Podge here. I put a bit of it on a piece of paper. Let's see if it slides up there. I'm going to take this brush. I'm going to put it on the first fret like this. Put a light coating on there. Of course, I want to keep it off my frets. And then I put this in a the decal in water right there. It slips right off. And then I just set it over that Mod Podge line it up and make sure it goes right to the fret like so and then i'm going to make sure i just leave it alone for a little bit and it's lined up there we go 
then I'll just take the other, the next one down and uh, make sure it's going the right way. Uh, soak it in the water. Um, you see that there's a gap here, and of course that's just where the ne next matchbook will start, so no biggie. All right, let's run up the neck here. We've got all the matchbooks on. I'm going to let this dry and give it a couple coats of Mod Podge, and then we'll move on to uh, getting the holes in the headstock for the tuners, and then we're going to use an Oklahoma road map uh, with the town that this is going to centered up in this area and then um, we'll mod podge that on there and mount this uh, route 66 badge all right guys we're back to um work on the oklahoma license plate guitar the last i saw you i was putting these matchbooks on the neck now it's time to get to the headstock i've got a part of an oklahoma map to put on here i've got a Route 66 badge to put on here and my tuners. Now, in order to get ready to do this, I made sure I was in the right mood. So I have my KATT Oklahoma City t-shirt on. Look how raggedy thin this is. And I also have my Bill Jackson Rig Company and my Bill Hodges Trucking Company. Both companies I work for in the Anadarko Basin, Oklahoma, moving drilling rigs which is where I got my wonderful personality. Let's get to work. There we go. Again, see my episode about tuners, um, and you're gonna find that these are fairly economical. They're heavy built. In fact, they're the most economical, um, but these slip up in here, and then they have a piece that fits down in threads over here. So um, I'm gonna sand this down. This will be ready, and then I can draw out uh, where my map is gonna go over this. Okay, I got a, uh, a pack of these maps on eBay, uh, seven or eight of them for about 10 bucks. I'm going to give a shout out to the person that sold them to me once this guitar is done and show them what happened. But I've got Norman and Shawnee in Oklahoma City right here. So uh, I want this to show up somewhere here, but um, my badge here, my Route 66 badge is going to be up here. So I'm going to need these to be about right here. So I'm going to line this up. Shawnee's right there. Norman is right there. Do I see them through the holes on this? Let's slip that down a little bit. Like so. And then this is no big deal. I just line this up. I take my trusty election pencil. You got to have one of those. And then I just draw around like this. All the way down like so and then I'm gonna cut this out and when I turn this over that is gonna fit right on here I will mod podge this on here and get this set of course I'm gonna know where my holes are and I'm gonna know where these holes are but once that's mod podged on here and got good coats on it comes down to right here where I'm gonna put my knot I graph because I still have to do the nut here and cut it off. Um, it'll look more like this one. It needs to be up a little bit. See there. But um, that graph is going to come right to here and fit here real nice. And then I can start putting stuff on here. Of course, can't forget I'm going to have Tammy sign the back right here. Hey guys, welcome to lunch. The last I talked to you, we had put Mod Podge on the neck and put this piece of map over it and lined it up where we needed. Of course, there's some overlap here. Uh, we're going to cut that off uh, in a bit here. Um, but you can see I've put the 66 badge on here. I've marked off in here underneath where uh, this is going to be uh, black under here so there's some contrast here when I take this off I'm also going to uh, blacken the edge here I can use a marker for both of those tasks um, to give me some better distinction between the map and the badge now I've taken a pencil and come in from the bottom on my tuner holes gone through the center and pushed up like this in each one of these so there's a distinct hole here on top now I'm going to take this off and I'm going to put my first coat of Mod Podge on the top before I try to do any trimming here or here or on the sides here because this paper uh, will get very stiff with the Mod Podge on it. It'll be easier to take a surgical scalpel and cut this nice and clean. So let's get a coat of Mod Podge on this. 
Okay, so we'll pop that off and I can see the 66 is right there. So I'm just going to basically go over this whole area right here, not just trying to color in the numbers themselves, but more so to get the area blocked in and blacked in. So the emblem sits over that is blocked off. You see that? That looks a lot better. Now our marker is dried where it won't smear and we're just going to take a little Mod Podge. Remember our neck, a nut or a nut for our neck is going to be right there so I don't want to put that all the way up. But I'm just going to go over this whole thing with a coat of Mod Podge and that's going to stiffen everything up for us to do the trim work we need to do. I don't want to forget to do the black underneath because that'll give us a little gloss when all this dries. But let's let this dry. I'm going to give it one more coat uh, after this to let things stiffen up. All right, there we go. You can tell it's got a, a sheen to it, meaning the Mod Podge is dry. Now I'm going to take the end of my little surgical cutter here. I'm going to go into these holes where I poked a pencil through and move these back and forth like so. Find the other one right there. Wiggle this back and forth. And I'm gonna let that dry a little bit more. And then I'm gonna take the end of this and then go around and cut that out. Um, but now that I've got some Mod Podge on here, let me get the angle of this right. I can just take, um, this knife here and cut into this and then slide it all the way down like this and clean up these edges. All right, now that I've got most of my trim work done, I'm gonna put another coat or two of Mod Podge on here. Again, we don't wanna get it down into the holes too much. And this is what's gonna protect this paper from coming off in the long term. So don't be shy about putting a few coats on there. All right, we're putting the 66 badge back on and tighten that up. And I think that the uh, darkening those edges really helped out there. And now let's move on to the tuners. All right, we got Tammy's signature right there. So we're going to take a little bit of clear make sure that that signature is protected all right we got a nice finish on the back of the neck and headstock and the front of it is looking pretty good so we're going to put these tuners on and i've uh, picked black tuners because they'll give us a nice contrast so let's get those in all right i like the way that looked i'm going to use these um silver uh con contrasting screws to hold these on. I'm going to flip it over first though and put the um, top retainers in. All right, all of our screws are in and um, make sure we hand tighten them. And then we'll put the final tightening on these up here. Okay, just keeping you caught up on my progress on the Oklahoma license plate guitar. I've taken one of these bone blanks. I've shaped it and sized it, beveled off the side towards the strings and got it ready and then glued it on to the end of the fingerboard using, that's right, the appropriate size clamp. Always use the appropriate size clamp even if you have the right size clamp. Why? Because you can, that's why. 
All right, we're moving right along on this Oklahoma license plate guitar. Now it is a four string and we're working on the tail piece right now. What I'm about to blow through very quickly was in the episode called Grounding the Strings and you'll see um, this resurface. It's a model of, of what I've done to ground the strings in the past. Anyway, I'm going to blow through this real quick um, and show you the steps. Again, refer to that uh, movie. It'll be in the I section up there at the top right of your screen. Don't forget about those. Lots of handy hints there. On this four string, what I do is I simply put this again. I can line these up any way I want. This time I've decided to do this. And then I just take a clamp like so and hold it. And then... I like this piece of wood that my bits fit into taking the small bit drilled down through each of the four holes into the top then remove this again taking the small bit and going all the way through to the bottom of the neck in those four spots there now I will take the bigger bit I will start off at the bottom and drill a little bit everything's falling apart here drill a little bit each way in so I don't go all the way through and uh, mash this out then I'll come from the top and I'll end up with some real nice smooth holes I will then put in my tension pins again with the groove to the back four of those I will beat those in and then I will put a piece of copper tape here trim it down make sure it drops all the way down into here where I can ground on the inside again see that grounding episode and cut my canning lid to match this section and it will be done okay so now I'm going to take a countersink tool and I'm going to broaden these edges out just a bit. There we go. I'm going to sand that just a tad. But the strings will come in from this way. The keeper will fit down there. It'll stop at the end of the pin. And then come up through here. So it's copper tape time now. So I want to go over this. Down this. Through here and up to here a little bit. So I'm just going to take this. It's a little bit wider. I just bend it over like that and give myself plenty to about right there and I'll cut it there. All right, so I'm gonna peel this back. I'm gonna stick it to the edge like that and I'm just gonna walk it down and peel it off as I go, not too much. And then I'm gonna take a pencil wherever the drop downs are and smooth it off like that. You see that? And just walk it up like this. Again, using that pencil to get down in the edges and then I end up there then I'll take my awl I'll find the holes that I drilled in there's one there one there one there and one there now all I got to do is put a piece of canning lid up here screw the holes down and then when I run the strings up through everything will be grounded because I'll take some of this leftover that I cut off here and drop down on the edges of this so I can put a wire from uh, my potentiometer and my pickup and everything down here to ground this. Okay, a little trick here uh, to find where to punch my holes through on the other side with an awl. I just set the little bit in here run it down the inside of the keeper feel it punch through and i flip it over and there are my four holes i just take my awl and tap the holes in like that all right short of a little filing here to make sure everything's okay as we don't want anybody getting anything hung up there the uh tail piece is done uh, the, the string keepers are in and I've uh, taken that piece of copper that was left over and put it there I will be taking 
a piece of canning lid there once I get all my wiring to it and I'll cut a little rectangle out of that to keep everything tight there but I have put this is 38 millimeters across here that's standard I put a mark at 19 there and one there and now it's time to think about our box okay real quick here this top of the box comes in uh, two pieces you see that this is cut out for your potentiometers your volume and tone pots if you use those uh, these holes are drilled where it drops down into the neck and then this goes over the top i want you to notice that you want to pay attention so right or left-handed guitar depends on where these holes go and this also has pre-drills here that match these holes so this needs to be upside down on here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take some tight bond and i am going to put it on here glue this together and clamp it up overnight now, i do have a little bit of touch up to do before i glue so i'm going to do that glue it up and show you what it looks like second part of the box is a two-piece configuration one of them has a cutout for the neck right here already again you want to remember that the volume pots and tone pots or cutouts are right there you don't want to glue this the wrong way there's a pocket right there um, if you're going to end the neck inside the box it seats in that pocket right there if not it can be cut out which is what i'm going to do but anyway we just lay these on top of each other like so line them up good and then glue them up there we go that's all clamped up and ready to set up overnight we will get that out of the way finally the last piece is the bottom of the box it's nice and finished um, all I have to do is set that uh, drill a couple holes that I'll show you that when it's done but we're gonna do a graphic on this and of course it's gonna be a road map map of Oklahoma I'm gonna make sure that it's turned the right way so when you turn the guitar around you can see it which would be this way but we're gonna put this graphic on the bottom of this box okay we have let everything dry up overnight there's a couple things that i have to do on the box to get it together um the first thing i want to do is blacken this part of uh the top out so when the license plate sits down in there any wood that shows through is going to be blackened out and it's going to give us a nice contrast there as well um then on this part i have to go around get these rough spots out here um, and then i am going to finish it i'm going to use a color uh, that complements the dark part of the license plate um, like a charcoal black color and then what i have to do with uh, this part here is make sure that the neck pocket seats right and is a good fit uh, not only this way here but also when the top sits down on here like so i need to make sure that the pocket seat can you see that right there sits right here so i'm going to take uh, this uh, measure what that difference is there something like this and then i have to take that down uh, that much on both ends finally i have to take both the top and bottom and line up some holes here to hold the top on ultimately i'll countersink those make sure that they match with what's going on on the other side 
as well as on the bottom. Once that's done on the bottom, I can take and put this graphic that I've cut out of a map on the bottom and wrap things up. So I'll get all that done. First thing I got to do is take this to the belt sander. We'll start there. I'll get everything finished up and then show you what it looks like. Okay, guys, I want to show you real quick what I've done here. I've got um, some paint that I put on the inside where the plate goes here. And so anything that shines through will be blacked out. You can see that. And then what I've done is I've measured the box out, the top of the box. Again, I use millimeters. You lay this across here. It's 228. This is 380. And so what I did was I found the center here and then I divided the difference between the center and the end, which was 95 each way here and here. I took a straight edge, made my mark there and there. And then I took this off and figured out how where half of this was. You see that measurement there? and went and back and marked up here and got the measurements of my holes. I drilled pilot holes and then uh, the hole that would accept these uh, screws. They're coated. They look cool with this type of thing. And then I used a countersink tool on each one of these holes. So when I drive these in, they will set up, see if you can see this, like so. I will turn them the right way. I did another episode called License Plate Guitar that shows you all of this. And anyway, that's how the top will stay. Now, we flip over the bottom. If you can see here, if I have a hole here, I can't have one on the bottom. So I put the holes on the bottom in the middle and then... I'm reinforcing them on each end. So this thing will be nice and sturdy when I'm done. Now I can get on to putting Mod Podge here. I'm going to take all this apart, Mod Podge this down, and find out where my holes are and do the trim work there. And on the top, we'll be able to start mounting our pick up and some other things in our, our mounts for the plate. So we're getting a lot closer now. All right, y'all know what this is. We're going to put a base coat on here. Now you see that I have taken a countersink and did the holes where the screws will hold the bottom to the sides and I don't really want to Fill those up with Mod Podge because we're going to have to cut the paper out and sink those down. I want to make sure there's nothing in there that's going to cause us lumps underneath. Sometimes Mod Podge will kind of gum up and you got to kind of make sure that there's none of those pieces sticking anywhere, especially on this coat because it's going to go underneath that piece right there. See it? Get that off there. Make sure the edges are good. Now we make sure that when we look at the back of the guitar, it's not upside down. Right-handed faces my body. And we just get one corner lined up. Then another one. I cut this just a tad big so we can trim around the edges and then we're just going to
There we go. We want to make sure that we let this dry good and firm up so there's nothing underneath. These maps being folded for a long time don't help us out any, but just want to make sure we work everything out. There we go. All right, guys, uh, catching up quick here. Uh, put a couple coats of Mod Podge on the back of the box to the point now where I can run my all down and make sure my holes are through the box. Also, uh, remember we ran it over the edge just a tad. So it'll be time to prune it or prune it. Yeah, I'm a tree guy. Trim all uh, of the excess off. Make sure our edges are good. And then I'm going to use a, like a gray stain uh, uh, here. Uh, and on the top of the box that will kind of make it look like barn wood. So, hey, I'm putting uh, my logo stickers on here. I think that looks pretty cool. Uh, next thing I want to show you is when it comes time to put the top of the box on here, you can see that I've um, put uh, screws in. And this is the part I'm going to stain with that lightish gray stuff. But when it comes time to put the license plate on, you can see that there are holes here, or these tabs, where the holes that you usually put the license plate onto your car go to. But if we use screws and take this in and out, after a while they're going to wear out. So I want to show you something pretty cool. They have these little, I'm not even sure what they call them. I think they call them T-nuts is what they're called. This one has spurs on it where you basically uh, drill a hole in the center like I have here and then drive this up. Now you can see that the ones that I've used here have a screw hole. So you just basically put them in there, you uh, anchor them down, and then when you put your license plate on, imagine there's a license plate here, I simply take this and I can put it down into there like that on all four of them and it's a lot better because after a while the screw is going to wear out. But that's how I mount these. Again, these are called T-nuts. And one more time, a lot of these, this stuff is covered in the episode called License Plate Guitar. Okay, let me run these in real quick because I want to show you the next step. You see how that works? Real easy. I want to get this plate down fairly tight. Here. Again, when you're putting stuff together, always have your clutch set down so you don't strip anything out but remember that I use floating bridges where I take this part off of here I'm gonna have to do some sanding here and that sanding will actually cause this to move up here about so um, but I take these posts and these thumb screws off and I'm actually going to drill holes and mount them here and the way I do that is I take my yardstick because I want to know where 25 and a half is. I've got it up on the bridge right here. And that line is going to be right there. So I'm going to put a straight edge there. And then I'm going to center this up by measuring the plate. Finding out where that is. Finding the middle of this. And then that is going to tell me where I need to put my floating bridge so I'll just simply when it comes time drop the all down in there tap it get both sides get the appropriate size drill take these out back them out there's an Allen ahead there back these out and then run them right down into the plate and then underneath I'll put a backup uh, nylon insert nut and that will keep everything together but we're going to lose this part so my floating bridge will sit here and that's the next step. Okay, so real quick, I put this piece of blue tape on here. It's easy to mark. Measuring across here, I find out that the center of this is 77 millimeters. I've made a mark there. This is 86 millimeters across. I've made a mark at 43. And then I found that my layout for my mark at 25 and a half scale is right there. So between this mark and this mark, you can see that right there. I hope you can see the graphite on there. I just set the middle of this on that line right there. 
I'm going to do a little mark right there. Eyeball this and make sure it's okay. I wish I had three hands here. I'm going to get this one more time. Line it all up. Make sure that's okay. Drop there. Now I can let go. Tap that just a tad. Make sure that everything is lined up. Come over here. Tap that a tad. Now I just drill holes there and there that are just big enough for this. There we go. And there's our holes big enough to accept these. It's starting to rain real good, but we're gonna take this Allen key and you just back this out like this. Do both of those, and then we'll put these in right here and work those down. And then it will be time to take this to the belt center and get it where it needs to be and I'll catch up with you after that's done. Okay we still got some fine tuning and sanding to do but these are in. I still have to put the nylon insert not on the back and it will stabilize them. I'll actually put a little bit of epoxy back there because I don't need this stuff cutting loose but this just drops right there like an old arch top now when I run my strings across here, I'm going to file things down again. There's some work to do here, but if I need to raise or lower my strings, bingo, I can just use those thumb screws. Okay guys, I have put some stain on the top of the box and touched up the bottom edge. And right now I'm starting to get down to the final details. Now this Oklahoma themed guitar, I'm going to put a couple touches on it. And one of these is a 1935 bu Buffalo head nickel. And I'm gonna embed that into the neck right here. I usually put them around the 12th fret, but the neck's a little bit shorter on uh, this guitar. And so I am going to put it about right here, right below um, this triangle pattern I have from doweling the neck. And as usual, I found the center of the neck right there, 19 millimeters across. I have a Forstner bit. I'm going to put my point right on the middle there. And need to set the clutch up just a little. And we are going to make sure that that nickel drops right down in there. There we go. Perfect. A little bit of Duco cement right there. Smear it around. I'm going to want it to climb up onto the edge, but not too much when I drop this down in here. Make sure it's nice and straight. There you go. Okay, now it's time to get in the box and start drilling some holes through for electronics and stuff. But the um, first thing that's going to happen is I've got a coil pickup that's a flat mount um, that matches in color the wood color the cover for it matches my floating bridge. So that'll mount about right here over the top of the license plate. But below, I've got to put my volume pot. I'm going to run it right through there. So we'll just take and pre there's a little pre-drilled hole there which is nice so i'm just going to go through there and then i'll run a bigger bit through up on the top and that's where my volume control will be right there um i've also got to put i like using pin end uh, jacks they're durable and tough and in your cable or your wireless pickup doesn't float around too much so i'm going to drill that through here but you'll notice here that where the bottom of the box, I've got a hole here. So if you don't pay attention to where these are and you start getting in here, I'm going to use a Forstner bit to put uh, this one in about here. But I'm going to make sure that I don't clash with that hole there. And then I've got a pin strap 
uh, that's chrome that I'm going to put up here again. I want to make sure that none of my electronics and, and holes there are messed up there. And I'll put that right up there. We'll use a piece of sash cord and a carabiner for the top end. So um, let me wire this up. We're getting closer to hearing what this thing will actually sound like. Right, we've got everything wired up. I still have some stuff to tighten up, but we've got the pickup in it. But now I'm going to put this wood cover. It matches the bridge here. I've drilled holes in the plate, made sure that it doesn't interfere with anything. And I'm going to use these screws. You notice I've countersunk that so they sit smooth here. And then I'm going to use these nylon insert nuts and a washer to hold this on i'll flip it over in a second okay there's the inside it's not real pretty but um i put some more copper tape on here i'm going to mount this wiring harness um and make it where it lays in there and doesn't move around nothing will get loose uh, there is the nylon insert washer uh, and, and nut holding down the plate or I mean the um, the pickup and now one of the last things I've got to do is I've taken another piece of canning lid cut a little square out of it and then I am going to put a small screw through there I've already drilled the hole and then I'm going to wrap this wire around it and ground everything to the back of the pod all of the uh, jack and the pickup and volume control and everything else is grounded and this is where i'll ground my string so uh we're getting close to this thing making noise all right everything's grounded i'm gonna have to open this back up again but let's put the back on it find a set of strings and we will make some noise all right everybody it's done a little bit of uh, touch up to do here and there and some filing and stuff but it's got a little bit of acoustic <laughs> It's done. Got some get ready for Sunday. Scott H. Byram going on in the background. But uh, there is the back. That's an Oklahoma map. There's my logo. Of course, it's got to go on there. Going up the neck. Look right there. There's the 1935 Buffalo Head Nickel. Oklahoma was in the middle of the Dust Bowl right then. And uh, there's my way of pinning the scarf joint together and making it strong course Tammy's signature let's flip this around all right there's our ball canning lid the grounding worked out great our Oklahoma farm truck license plate got this flat pup from MGB got the floating bridge I like these box corners ask me where I got them of course Tammy touched these up with a little sandpaper and give that scuff up all the Oklahoma matchbooks and then I'm really proud of that headstock. Got the 66 badge on it. The three-quarter size of the original that uh, MGB made. Thanks, Michael Breedlove. And, of course, the map right there. And the town it's going to is right in the middle of all that. All right, what about the strings? Well, there's four of them. And they are the middle set of strings from... Or the top set of strings from... Uh, Ernie Ball, regular slinky, 46, 36, 26, and 17, going from heavy to light. I've got this tune, kind of an odd tuning, but it is G sharp, D sharp, G sharp, and C. Hey, 
and it sounds pretty good on the amp. Okay guys, that's it. This is my longest video yet. Uh, if you've watched the whole thing, you should know how to make one of these by now. And there's a, lots of links up on the iCards up there to kind of take you back to episodes where we went into stuff in depth. I very much appreciate the person I made this guitar for in this episode. is more so to capture uh, this build for her, uh, to share with her friends. But I hope you learned something as well. So, don't forget to give me a like and hit that subscribe button. That bell it will let you know when my videos come out. Believe me, you, you've endured through the longest one, so even the 30-minute ones will seem short to you in the future. I appreciate your support. Uh, don't forget to check out my playlist and send me an email. I like to hear from y'all.